Every five years we get a new farm bill, every five to seven years. Um, and that's basically, uh, you know, this, this year-long process that we're going through right now where they're hashing out the promises and the programs and the budgets for the next five years. And then, um, but, but as a matter of fact, really every single year after that we get a new farm bill because it's budgeted in an annual appropriations process and there they can tinker with the, the plans and the promises that have been made during that, that particular farm bill. Tinker in what way? Well, um, you know, they could promise certain things in the bill such as con new conservation programs or new supports for um, school lunch programs to eat healthy foods from local farmers but then when the appropriations committees get it and they hold the purse strings in the government in the budgetary process they can just decide not to give the money and turn around and give it to somebody else you know take from one pot and give to another um, so, so you asked me about um, the new, you know, they're, they're currently right now, um, Secretary Johans and the Bush administration has put forth a plan. And um, there is some language in there and some money that they're promising to give to what's called specialty crops. That would be fresh fruits and vegetables grown, you know, largely by California, Oregon, Florida, um, other states along the coasts because our, our central states have become just these huge industrial farms that don't really produce food but rather food ingredients and they have to import all their food from far far away and um, these farmers are clamoring for help themselves they've been they've been uh, you know blocked out of the subsidy game for decades and all family farmers really are, are struggling to make it these days and I think they feel like well if a cotton farmer should get supports why shouldn't a carrot farmer or a diverse vegetable farmer apple farmer you know someone who's actually um, supplying healthy foods for kids for adults for their communities so on how would you how would you answer that question why why aren't why haven't they been part of the old farm bills well I think it goes back to um, a lot of the early programs were about storable commodities and you know fresh vegetables um, they weren't you know storable um, but you know those early those early programs were also went back to Confucian times and even the times of the Pharaoh and Joseph where they were hoarding the government that was storing food in times of surplus so that it could be distributed in, in times of need now that was really sort of a you know that was the last stop gap against hunger it wasn't sort of like this is what we should be eating now what we have is these storable commodities have come on the front end of our food system and um, and they're made so cheap and you know these huge corporations are just pumping them into the fast food aisle and into our schools and into our supermarkets and we have less and less choice um, you know that that's what has uh, you know made eating well a little bit of a really difficult task these days now um, should vegetable farmers be subsidized? Um, you know, it's a good question. I think, you, you know, it, just like any subsidy program, I think it ought to pass some kind of litmus test. Why should they? Who's going to benefit? What's going to be the result? You know, and, and really, who is the ultimate beneficiary? Um, I, I certainly think that there needs to be a lot more equity in the system. And there has to be a lot more uh, alignment of the crops we're supporting with health and nutritional guidelines. I mean, that just makes all the sense in the world to me. And I think it really ought to start with what we feed our children.